So in this video, I'm going to help you guys to create a, an airfoil using Onshape that you guys could potentially 3D print or just use as a 3D model. And so this is something in the past in Project Lead the Way that we would do with Inventor, but because we don't have Inventor and we now have Onshape, the process is a little bit different. So we're going to take our you know airfoil that we designed using the NASA foil sim right and so we should already have this designed and we're going to learn how to take the points and import them into Onshape and then create a 3D model with that so our first step and I'm not going to review this step is to design an airfoil in Onshape so using you know the shape and adjusting your shape and your size you'll design your own customized airfoil and so I'm going to just use this one as an example and so we're going to take these points right in the geometry tab. We're going to click on the geometry tab and we're going to take all these points. We're going to just hit control A. I haven't found a good way to, to copy paste them. If you can copy paste here, that's great. But for me, I have to click control A and control C. And so then we're going to open up a new Google sheet. So go to Google sheets and just make a blank Google sheet and we're going to paste these in. So control V. Now we do want to get rid of everything except for our points. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to just highlight all of the cells above the points and delete those cells. We're going to shift the other cells up. And then same thing in the spacing, right? So we'll have some spacing right here, the lower surface up to these two blank uh, cells. We're going to right click those, delete those and shift them up. Now the issue here is all of these points these are my X coordinates, Y coordinates, pressure and velocity. We don't want the pressure and velocity, but we also need to split them. So if you just click on the A, that's going to highlight all of those. Press data and go to split text to columns. We want to split these by the space. So now we have our X coordinates, our Y coordinates, and these two, the velocity and the pressure, they're extra. So we're going to right click those and we're going to delete those, com uh, those columns. So now we have our X coordinates and our Y coordinates. So we're good. So you can you know, rename this spreadsheet, whatever you want. I'm going to just name it airfoil points for the video. And we're going to go to file. We're going to download this as a CSV file, comma separated values. And so you're going to download this file. Just save it you know, into your downloads. And now you're going to open up this file that I'm, I'm going to link. I did not create this. Uh, I'll link to, to the original creator's video as well, but I did not create this. I'm just kind of adapting it to use for Project Lead the Way. And so he has a lot of code here, which is great that this code will take your points and plot them and then use the spline feature to connect them, kind of play connect the dots and turn that into your airfoil. So. I'm going to actually use uh, kind of my student account to show our process. So this is a view only document. So your first step will be to make a copy. You name your copy, whatever you want. And then once we've made our copy, now we need to import those points that we just downloaded. So we're going to click on the plus insert new element and we're going to go to import. We're going to press import. And then we're going to find our file that our CSV file that we just downloaded. And it's going to tell us, yes, it's successfully imported. And once we have that, what's going to happen is now it's going to show up down here as a CSV file. So part studio, it's going to show up as a CSV file. We're going to click on it. And this part's a little bit tricky, but it's not too bad is our URL. This is the path to our file. If you go all the way to the right, the very end of the URL, what is going to link what Onshape is going to use to find our file is just this last section right after the slash. So you want to click into your URL, go all the way to the end and just highlight from the end all the way up until the last slash. And you're going to right click and copy that or control C. And then in feature studio one, once I have that copied, we're going to go to feature studio one to this code. And I changed it to say missing tab to make it really obvious. So you're going to go to missing tab and just highlight those numbers and control the right click doesn't work here. So you're going to have to click control V to paste in your, your path. That's your path that will take it to, to your file. 
Once that's done, you're gonna press commit. Once you've pressed commit, now if we go back to part studio one, now we're going to see our file. And actually yours won't have an extrusion. So let me delete the extrusion. Um, so your file should end up just looking like this. And this line here is our chord line. So in Project Lead the Way, we should have learned about the chord line, right? Connecting the leading edge to the trailing edge. And it doesn't always actually get it perfectly. I think the, the true chord line on this would have been uh, from here to all the way to the end. But what, what happens is this kind of creates a little bit, bit of an issue because this is the lower part of my airfoil and this is the upper part of my airfoil. And this bottom section is just extra. So we want to make sure when we extrude that we do not extrude that. Now don't try to delete it. If you try to delete it, it'll delete everything. So what I did, if you're going to 3D print this, I wanted to get nice kind of more square rectangular uh, sizing when I 3D printed it. So what I did is I just extruded it by the same length as my cord line. And you know, depending on your workspace units, you might be in inches or you might be in meters. But essentially, I clicked on my cord line. Mine in this case was 0 0.1 meters. That's very close to four inches long. And that was a good 3D print size for me. So what I did is I clicked on my bottom surface, my top surface, then I clicked extrude and I extruded it by that same distance that 0 0.1 meters, or if you're in inches around four inches, and this will be a good size to 3D print. If you're not 3D printing it, then you're fine. You, know, you can extrude it whatever distance you want. But now we have our, our 3D model of our airfoil. And again, if you want to 3D print it, that last step would be to go to, uh, we're going to click on part one. We're going to right click it. We're going to press export and we're gonna export it to an STL. We wanna pick the STL format for our 3D printer. I also changed my resolution to fine since this has a lot of curves and you want your inches to match up with what it was in, in your file. So if you were in inches, then you know four inches. If you were in meters, you would do it with meters. Then you'll press okay and we'll download this file. And so that's something that you can submit to your teacher.